is yours truly, Antoine Bate, man. And we down here in Mobile, Alabama at the Senior Bowl 2022. Um, and as everybody says, the draft starts here, man. Um, exciting time, you know, out here. I uh, check in with some of these, these youngsters, man, whose dream is to go to the next level. So, you know, definitely with this show, man, we're going to have some youngsters come up here, just talk about their, their journey, why they're excited to be here, what this um, opportunity is for them. So, again, man, it's the Man to Man Pod. I'm Antoine Mate, and we will be back. back. Man to Man Pod, I'm AB, and we're sitting down with the, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> <laughs> Jim Nagy, down here in Mobile, Alabama. Um, as they say, the draft starts here in Mobile. Um, Happy to have you, man. Yeah, no, happy to have you. Uh, this is cool having you down here. This is your first time down. Uh, I know you you played with with our guy Michael Coe, who's our, our new DFO this year. Yeah. So this is great, man. This is what uh, this is what I, this is what we want. We want former players down here. We want to, you know, make all the connections and uh, yeah, keep building, man. You're helping us build this thing. Nah, I appreciate sure. it. Now nah, for sure, man. I appreciate you guys having me. Um, my my question is. Um, you being the head, the head of the the, the Risa Senior Bowl, man. What do you want to get out of this um, for for the for the youngsters? Obviously, they're here and they're trying to you know make a name for themselves. They're on a, um, a, a national platform with all the um, scouts. Um, you know, you got agents here. You got you know front office. What is it that you want the younger the youngsters to get out of this experience? Just a great opportunity to connect. Yeah. You know, uh, like these guys all have tape, right? Um, but they're all here for different reasons, whether it's a small school guy, you know, like you can relate to. Yeah. Um, guys that need to show themselves against a higher level of competition, um, you know, and even, even these SEC guys, you know, just the ability. You got 32 teams here, yep. all the key decision makers, head coaches, GMs, personnel directors, just making that connection. When you think about the draft process, it's only a few months. Yeah. And you, I mean, you, it wasn't that long ago you went through it. So, like, when you really think about it, like, how much time did the Colts really spend with you? Did, I, I think any time time you can get with, with teams you got to take that opportunity, opportunity for sure. so um, you know I think this game makes sense for like 99% of the players if mm -hmm. you're gonna be a top five pick or a top 10 pick I get it like yeah. I'm not gonna fight you but if you're if you're like in the teens or the 20s and you could move up I think our game makes more sense for those guys because if you can go like Daniel Jones who would have been like a late teens early 20s pick and go six overall and make yourself 14 million bucks <laughs> no question that's a lot of money man no like, question. I don't know no if I've made that much I, I know I haven't made that much much money in my whole life so uh so no just the opportunity just yeah. the opportunity to connect with these teams and show themselves now i say that all the time i'm like the opportunity is the biggest thing you know and like yeah. you said when you can perform um in front of all those eyes that's 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 people that's critical in the um the decision making process um you got to do it and, and, and not to cut you off man but like the guys that are going to be pulling the card off the board in april those guys aren't out on the road a ton in the fall, you know. Like they're they're at their games. Mm -hmm. They're at they're at their place on Sunday watching a game. So, you know, to get those guys down here field level too, um, it's one thing to watch the tape and see guys moving them. But when you're at field level, yeah. I mean, you can see guys' reactions when they get beaten to drill. For sure. I mean, there's so many takeaways when you're up close and you can really feel it. Yeah. It's one thing to see it, but when you're on the field, you can feel that. Mm -hmm. You know, just like when you play, you you could feel it in an opponent, right? No, no question. <laughs> um, so so the, the, that's the that's the key. You know, is getting in front of the guys that are going to be making the decisions because um, they're just human too like they want to draft the guys they've seen too yeah. right they, yeah. they, we're all human like there's a little more level of buy-in mm -hmm. when they've seen them rather than just some scout telling them a player's good if they've seen it themselves yeah um, it helps yeah so. it does it does so yeah for the listeners um the, the, the process in you know picking these players um going to the small schools um you know if they had a great year maybe not so good year what's the process that you guys go through to pick these players to, to, to make this trip yeah uh, Antoine so we you know got here four years ago mm -hmm. and it might sound crazy but we didn't even have tape in the office four years ago <laughs> like I called the league office I'm like how do I get tape man yeah, I can't do my crazy. I can't do my job without yeah. having tape yeah, right that's wild. Uh, so when we've just tried to structure it like an NFL personnel department so what, what we've done the last four years we have a new scouting staff every year um, kind of get guys to get let go in the hiring firing cycle mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, guys, and we, we had uh, Kathleen Wood, who's the area scout for the Browns now, so I can't just say guys. Right, Kathleen right, right. is part of our group. And that's big. Uh, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. And she, you know, she was here for a year, and now she's the first full-time female uh, area scout. Okay. So, uh, but no, we, you know, so this year we had seven former NFL scouts, 120 years of experience all over the country. We're at games every Saturday. We're, we're downloading the tape from the NFL Dub Center, just like the teams do, watching tape all week. Uh, 
you know, we're grading players and we've got our own scouting system. So really trying to mirror exactly what the NFL is doing. Mm -hmm. And then with the small school guys, like, yeah, we don't have an NFL budget. We're right. not in the schools every day. Yeah. So that's where, you know, my relationships of being in the league for 20 years come, come in handy. Yeah. Guys will just call me. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had two Division three players in the game in the last two years from Wisconsin Whitewater and St. John's in Minnesota. We would have never been never. able to find those guys, man. So, yeah, we obviously have to do our own work on those guys, but they'll give us a heads up. Like, yeah. hey, man, there's a there's a dude here at Illinois State or there's right. a dude here at Bethune-Cookman. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's how we get on a lot of the small school guys. No, I like it. I like it. I'm not going to keep you too much long. I know you're a busy no, man. No, I got time, man. <laughs> I got time for you. Um, talk, talk about one of my former teammates, man, Michael Cole. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, one of the big reasons that, you know, that we're here. You know, he actually reached out and said, hey, man, um, I got a new position over here. We'd love to get you guys out here. Um, and, and, and get some content. So just talk about that relationship and how it's been, how it's been having Michael Cole um, on the team. Yeah, so we uh, we connected last summer. I think it was June when we announced the HBCU Combine coming to Mobile. Uh, kind of a joint thing we did with the NFL League office this year. We just had it this past weekend. Yep. Uh, when we announced that, man, there was like an outpouring of support. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be fraternities, local alumni chapters here around Mobile, mm -hmm. schools, players. Uh, Mike, Mike just hit me up on a DM. And we we connected there, got on the phone, and I told him about the scout school program we have. Yeah. So my predecessor, Phil Savage, who was the GM of the Browns when you played, yep. um, Phil started, started a really cool scout school program. Um, and it was really drawing a lot of guys that were working in recruiting offices around college. The only thing we've tweaked it a little bit, I just opened it up to former NFL players. Okay. Uh, you know, all my years in the NFL, like I just saw a need for more players in I that like profession, that. I like uh, that. more minorities in that in that prof in the profession. Yeah. So the last three years, that's what we've done. And so Mike came down. He was part of scout school. Uh, we've got all those guys back this week as group leaders with our players, mm -hmm. just trying to create opportunities for them to connect. Um, but Mike was Mike was special, man. Like he he, he loves the game. Yeah. Uh, he loves studying the game. He loves talking in the game. Uh, so he was a great addition for us. He's our new director of football operations. It's a new position we've never had before. Right. I think that shows how we're growing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and we we really you know I'm, I'm going to use your pot a little bit, man. Like <laughs> we, we want to boost this. We want to boost this scout school program, right? Um, so any any young cats that are you know have been bouncing on practice squads or, or maybe you played one contract and you're you're 25, 26 and you you're yeah. out and you want to stay, stay connected, connected to the ball to the and work yeah. in the NFL. Like we really want to this program to build. Um, so that's how we connected, man. Mike's yeah. done an awesome job like he's so good at what he does i've got my connections from you know all my years in scouting the nfl front offices mike brings a whole different set of connections right. like with the guy like you and the yeah. guys he played with and his dad's a long time coach at the college and pro level yeah. so he knows all, he knows a bunch of coaches through his dad um so man it's been awesome having him he's great that's great man um you, you mentioned it um and you know it's a, it's a soft spot in my heart the hbcu combine that yeah. you guys had this past saturday um i thought that was a beautiful thing just because um you know, I, I felt a certain type of way. I think it was two years ago. Not one, H, not one player from HBCU got drafted. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, you know, no way in hell that can <laughs> that can happen. I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's talent there. So for you guys to, to to partner with NFL and have that HBCU combine, uh, what are you looking to get out of that? And how and how was it being that this was the first year you guys was at, you had that down here? It was awesome, man. Yeah. It was awesome. Great feedback already. Obviously, in a first year event, there's things you can tweak. For sure. Um, we'll get through this week and we'll debrief with the league office and things you know and our staff and what can we do better next year. Um, but just a great opportunity. You know, we had. Uh, it was really cool. Like Donald Driver was back. Rasheen, uh, Rasheen Mathis was back. Mm -hmm. um, who were some of the other guys? Aeneas Williams, uh, DRC. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was, there was, you know, and those guys have done it. They, like, they've walked that path yeah. like you have. So, uh, again, not, I, some guys crushed the workout and did a great job in the workout. But to me, just from a scouting perspective, I'll, I'll pull you, pull you behind the curtain a little bit. Yeah. Like what happens is, I think people don't understand. Like these guys are getting scouted. Like I've been, I've been through every HBCU in the country, I think, mm -hmm. in my time. So they are getting scouted. Where there's the gap is in the spring. So you know, if you're a scout, if you're doing the Southeast, you've got all these FBS schools. I mean, you're hopping Alabama to Auburn to Georgia to Clemson. South, you know, you're you're going all over. There's only so many days on the calendar. So right. just logistically. You know, if you got if you got to get from Tennessee down to Miami and back up to Oxford, I mean, it's a that's a it's huge a region. For sure. And if you got to cover all those FBSs, that's where the majority of the players are, right? So you get to those first. It doesn't leave a lot of time to hit. Whether it's HBCUs or just other FCSs or D2s, it, it doesn't leave a lot of a lot of time. Right. And where that gap is, if you're going to be a later round pick or a free agent. 
as a scout, like whether it's a kid from Alabama or a kid from Florida A and M, you got to know those guys, yeah. right? Because yeah. it's we all know that these teams want to hold on to their high draft picks, For right? Sure. Yeah. So if you're going to be that guy, if you're going to be that seventh round pick or that PFA that comes in and, and sticks around and, and battles and you know gets on a practice squad and, and eventually makes it, you got to be wired mm -hmm. a certain That's way. A different way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Way, yeah. And if you can't sit across from a from a young man and hear his background, where he came from, the, the stuff he's overcome in life. Like it's hard to go back in April draft meetings and pound the table and be like, we want this dude. Like, yeah. like in your case, this guy needs to be a Colt. Yeah. Like he's what we want. So if you don't have that, it's hard to do that. Yeah. Like I never would do that for a player that I never felt connected to, right? right. Yeah. Because my name's on every player that I try to bring in the building. Yeah. And if we're bringing in guys that keep failing, then that's on yeah, me, that's and I'm going to lose my job. Yeah, exactly. So. You know, long-windedly. Sorry to be a long-winded no, answer, good. You're good. You're but good. To, but to be in those interviews and connect with those teams, now you've got you've got people from 32 teams that were all here for this event. So we had the 32 teams captured for the Senior Bowl. Right. They can go back now and be like, this you know, is the guy. this dude from Prairie View, man. Like this is this is the guy. You know, he he didn't work out great, but man, there's something to this kid. Yeah. Just to just trust me on this one. So hopefully that creates more opportunities, whether they get drafted or not. Hopefully there's going to be guys that get their foot in the door. And as you know, man, you get your foot in the door, man. that's on you. You and, know, then and, you can take it where you want to take it. And then, you know, just playing 14 years in the league, um, those guys are what really make your team. It's those, the mid-round, the late round. No you know, question. You have them free agents that, you know, come on the team and do well for you on, on, on special teams. And, you know, at some point in the season, they're going to have to come in and play. So um, it's very important to be able to get those, you know, mid-round, late-round guys. No um, doubt. And, and free agents. Um, that's, um, the, that's the backbone of your football team. But you that's can, it. You can have Reggie Wayne and, and, and Edger and James and those guys, but you got to have those guys. Like, we used to call those guys glue guys. Like, yeah. you got to have those dudes in the locker room that keep the team together. Again, every team, November, December hits, your roster doesn't look anything like it did on September 1st, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So those guys got to be up and be ready to step up and play. No question. No question. I'm going to let you go, but um, can you can you plug that scout school one more time for, for the guys that's listening, man? Um, how can they get – um, into that scout, scout school, where do they go to? Yeah, they can, they can reach out to Senior Bowl, um, hit us up, DM Co. or DM me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's going to be the first week in June. We do that the first week in June every year. Um, like to get guys, you know, signed up. Again, we've got a great group of guys the last couple of years. Um, we really want to get it younger, though. Yeah. You know, we want to get some younger guys that, that uh, you know, 25, 26, whatever that might be, that the league will see as guys, okay, we can we can train that guy. Yeah, like, yeah. we can get him going on the road. So, yeah, any former players that are listening, uh, it's a great, it's a three-day program. You come down to Mobile, we have tons of film sessions. We bring in former players, that guys that have played in the league that right. have also scouted. Like, a couple years ago, we had Bucky Brooks come down. Okay. Um, you know, Tim Terry, the, the pro director of the Chiefs, came down. Lenny McGill from the from the Miami Dolphins, one of their scouts, came in this year. So just bring, because they, they can speak, I can speak to the scouting sky side, mm -hmm. they can speak to the, I've played, played it, it, and I've made that transition to front office, yeah. and they can talk through that, yeah. right? So yeah. it's, it's a great three-day program. We bring them back here for Senior Bowl week. The plan long-term is to get them going during the fall with us, help them down in our fall scouting process, yeah. um, and have them watch tape during the week and re submit reports and, and really get them trained up. Yep. So yeah, if you're interested, we'd love to, any but, players out there, man, let, let's go, let's do nah, it. That's dope. Oh, man, we gotta get some. We gotta get more formal players, man, into that position, man. No doubt. Um, um, so I love it, man. Again, man, Jim, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you for having us. I appreciate love what you, you're doing, man. So keep doing your thing. Thanks, man. All appreciate right. you having me on. Yes, sir. Man, there you have it, man, Jim Nagy. You know, running the show down here in Mobile at the Senior Bowl. Um, I love it. I love to see it, man. Doing great things out here. Uh, definitely with the HBCU Combine first year going on. Um, I love to see that. So again, man, y'all stay tuned. I may be with the Man to Man podcast. Dude, what it do, man? We back, Man to Man pod, man. I may be. My co-host DB, man, wasn't able to be here, but I'm in Mobile, man. I'm in Mobile, Alabama, Senior Bowl. Um, I got my guy, man, Kobe Bryant. Yes, what's, sir. What's good? How you doing? What's good, man? How you? Man, good. I'm chilling. Slow motion, man. Kobe yes, Bryant, Cincinnati, man. Um, y'all had a good year this year, man. Yeah, yeah, had a sure. Good year. Um, y'all had a good run. Um, what did you think about the year for y'all? Uh, it was it was a great experience, you know, with me coming back for my fifth year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's what you come back for, you know, your last year to go out like the way we did. And obviously we didn't get the win, but, you know, just to have that experience and, you know, 
face the things that we did and you know just like i said have a great year so it's special nah that's what's up man just talk yeah. about your, your experience down here i think um you know i was a late round drive pick six i i'm, I'm i don't think you'll be you'll be there in the Dude. sixth round but <laughs> But uh, but for me, man, it was all about the opportunity. Right, right. right. All I want is the opportunity to get into a camp. I just wanted one team to like me, man. Yeah. Um, being able to be down here in Mobile and go up go up against some of the the, the, the good players you can go up against. Right, right. Um, what you expecting this week? Competition, man. You know, go out and compete. You know, most importantly, have fun. You know, football is fun. You know, I've been playing football since I was six years old. Yeah. You know, you never want to make this game complicated. You know, just go out and compete and, you know, build a relationship with guys as well, too. You know, these relationships that you're going to carry into the next level you know, for years on years and years. So, yeah, for sure. So, shit, when you, when you talk about you as a player, man, what, what you feel is those your strengths as a player? You know, whether it's, you know what I'm saying, your IQ, um, your speed, your, your, your size, you're a good yeah. size for a corner. Like, yeah. what, what do you think your, 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 your pros as far as, you know, what you bring to the game? I would definitely say physicality, um, you know, my mindset, like you said, football IQ, mm -hmm. um, and like you said, my physicality or, or my uh, size, so for sure. Yeah, so for me, you know, I always want to be my, uh, my toughest critic, right? So right, regardless right. of what anybody said to me, like I already knew what it was, right, you know what I mean? Right. So as a, as a young corner, obviously it's a lot that you can learn, but in this process right now, what is one of the main things that you want to get better at? Uh, this week I want to feel like I can get better at press, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just dominating the press. Like you said, I'm a big corner. So, you know, I want to be, I want my presence to be felt at the line of scrimmage, you mm -hmm. know, and have an opportunity, you know, to be with the Jets and learn from professional coaches. Is, yeah. is, it's a blessing, you know, get that head start, you know, so that way going into the NFL, I know what to expect. Nah, man, that's real. I, I'll tell you this, um, like you said, soak, soak everything in this right, week, right, you know what I mean? Right. Whatever the coaches give to you, make sure you be a sponge, man. Make sure you get all that, that, uh, that information and take it in, you right, know what I right. mean? Um, so looking at your stats, man, yeah. you know, your, your 2021 stats, 34 solos, two forced fumbles, three INTs, and um, 11, 11 pass deflections. So obviously right there it tells you around the ball. Right, right. Um, you'll come up, you'll make plays. Um, looking back on your career, man, anything that you would have done different? I would say my freshman year of college, you know, take the playbook more seriously. Right. You know, you know, freshman year, you just going in, you know, just going off blind faith, honestly, you know, just going in and trying to fit in, honestly, you yeah. know. I would just feel like I should have, you know, took the playbook more serious, you know, and, you know, that way I would have had a head start and everything. And, but, you know, it, it all works out itself. You know, a guy had a plan for me, you know, just trusted behind him and his plan. So that's where that's yeah. real. So before I let you go, man, I know you just, sure. it's been an early morning for yeah, you. For sure. Co Kobe Bryant. Yeah. You know, what, what, <laughs> was, was that was that inspired by, by anybody? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, my parents love Kobe Bryant, yeah. so, you know, that was obviously, you know, it was a reason behind, you know, they felt like we had some similarities from me coming out, you know, so yeah. it was it was special, you know, to carry that name, and I had big shoes to fill from the day I came out, you For know, sure. so. Nah, yeah, it was right. nah, that's what's up, man. I appreciate you stopping by, man. Yeah, it's Kobe Bryant, you. man, from, from Cincinnati. Wish you the best of luck this appreciate week, that. man. Do your appreciate thing, it. bro. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. The Man to Man podcast, man. I may be down here in Mobile, Alabama, man. I got JoJo Doman sitting next to me, man. Um, down here in Mobile, man, getting ready for the draft, man. How was your experience so far here in on Mobile? Yeah, it's been surreal. A lot of competition, uh, a lot of moving parts, you know. I'm learning a new defense and doing meetings, interviews, the whole nine. So it's a lot, but. Uh, I'm, I'm up for it. Yeah, man. They just getting ready. They getting you ready for that next step. You yeah. know, because uh, when you get that call, because you'll get that call, um, that that's how your day to day life will be, man. Um, again, man. You know, I'm big on opportunity, right? Um, I went to a smaller school, um, but I always talk about you got to do the most with your opportunity. And obviously, being down here in Mobile, you're going up against some of the top players um, in the nation. You have, um, you know head coaches here you have position coaches here you have front office execs here um what does this opportunity mean to you to be able to be able to go up against other guys and show your skill yeah just try to be myself show them show them my competitive nature show them that i'm a quick learner show them that i'm a good te good teammate yeah. that i want to be here so i mean all the things are going into this week and i'm i might i'm not going to win every rep right but I'm going to win every mental rep and I'm going to bring my energy to every situation and every relationship here and just try to build relationships. Nah, man, that's a good, a great attitude to have. Um, so funny story, um, you know, 
they said, you know, you they gonna, when you come out here, they're going to put you at safety. Yeah. And then tomorrow, well, yesterday, they they, jump, they throw you in there at middle linebacker. Like, what was your mind? How was your mind, your mind process, your thought process when they told you that? Yeah. Yeah, I was listed as a safety and a linebacker, so I really didn't know what I was going to get myself into. I ended yeah. up playing Will linebacker yesterday, so just I don't have much experience in the box. I didn't play in the box right. in college yeah. unless formation dictated me to come in the For box. Sure. And, I mean, those are some big dudes down there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so as, a, as my coaches and my teammates, what we used to always say in the locker room is the more you can do. So definitely good to be able to put that on film and just say, hey, if we need to, maybe we can slide them inside. Yes. But, um, but off the field, man, what, what, are you, what are your interests? You know what I mean? When, you, when it's not football, when you're not watching film, man, um, what do you do in your downtime? Um, big relationship guy, just hanging out with the boys. Yeah. Uh, watch some shows. Big Ted Lasso guy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, love board games, card games, and listen to music, man. Nah, that's dope. That's dope. Um, if a team would draft you, right? If a team would pick you up, what type of player are they get? Yeah, they're getting a competitive son of a guy that is a quick learner. That's best footballs ahead of them. Mm -hmm. That's gonna bring a uh, good culture and good energy to the locker room. Yeah. And, that just that loves football and is there for all the right reasons. Yeah, and, and tell me, so I wasn't fortunate enough to play in the Senior Bowl, but to be able to have an NFL coaching staff mm -hmm. coaching you while you're down here, like what does that mean to you? Because obviously you can hear the different type of ter terminology, you can see the past and the energy and just the knowledge that these coaches have. So as a young player, man, what does that uh, what does that do for you? Yeah, like you said, the terminology, and I'm just picking up on what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of just like a, a practice round, so to speak. I mean, a practice round that means a lot, yeah. like make you a lot of money or lose you some money. But <laughs> nonetheless, like just kind of getting a glimpse of what it's going to be like. So in, in that aspect, I feel like all of us here are getting a leg up on everybody else in the country because we do have this one-on-one -on -one experience with a real-life coach and staff. Yeah, man. Again, man, I don't want to hold you, man. But again, I'm going to wish you the best of luck, man. Keep doing your thing out here, man. Again, it's an opportunity of a lifetime, and I, in April, man, I hope you get that phone call. Appreciate it. All right, man. Yes, it's good, good, man. We back at it. Man to man pop, man. I'm AB, man. My co-host, D-Butt, man, is not here in Mobile with me, but you know I'm going to hold it down. Um, again, man, we got another guest, man. We got Greg Jr. Um, Watch talk Baptist D2 school, man. Um, happy to be here, man. How you, how, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, just uh, taking it all in, doing the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, man, I came from a smaller school, one uh, AA, Howard University, man. So I already know how it is coming from a smaller school. Mm -hmm. um, what about this process and this opportunity um, is big for you? Because obviously, you know, possibly not a lot of scouts, um, not a lot of teams. Um, you know, really, really know who you are as a player, but being able to be on this platform and have this um, this opportunity, man, how is this opportunity for you? Uh, it's just, uh, just being able, I just, uh, it's an opportunity just to be able to show my, showcase my skills, uh, yeah. and just show that, that I compete with the best of the best. Yeah. So. So yesterday, you know, they won on the field, um, one-on-ones, um, seven on seven, things of that nature. How you think your first day went? Uh, uh, it was kind of, kind of, Kind of rested a little bit, uh, yeah. just getting back out there. Uh, I know I had went to the NFL PA uh, NFL game. I did some practices and stuff, but uh, just uh, different receivers, uh, yeah. a lot quicker, faster. So just uh, going out there, just getting some reps, uh, felt good. Uh, I know I know what to do today. Mm -hmm. So look, talk, talking about you know teams, you know you got a lot of teams here. You got a lot of. Um, front office execs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So if they're coming to, if a, if a team is looking at you, what type of player they get? Uh, they're gonna get a player that's uh, that's consistent, mm -hmm. uh, that's hard worker, a love to compete, a quick learner, and just uh, 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 an uh, uh, open guy. That's good, man. That's good. So again, man, you know I'm not gonna keep you long. Just wanted to, you know, get you here, chop your brain. You know, this is called man to man. Uh -huh. um, you know, we like to do a lot of DB talk, man. Um, what's one of your, 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 your pros as a player, you know, as far as I, I, I'm looking at you, it's, you have the you have the size, you uh -huh. have the length, man. So when you turn or when a scout turns on that film, what they going to see? Uh, just a uh, uh, perfect uh, press man technique. Every time you click on the film, it's going to look the same every time. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, uh, I take pride in uh, my, my technique, press nope. man technique. Okay, no, nah, and that's what it's all about, especially playing that DB. Because mm -hmm. um, when you get to that next level, everybody's going to be good. Yeah. But what's going to separate you from another corner or another player is going to be that technique and how consistent you can be mm -hmm. down in and down out. 
you know. So, again, man, I wish you the best of luck, man. Go yes, out here and do your thing while you're down here, man. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. Take it one day at a time, bro. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Now, always. Man, we back. Day two. The man to man pot I may be. Um, obviously, you know, we, while we here, Senior Bowl, Mobile, Alabama. The draft starts here. Um, and shoot, man, I got the pleasure, man. Got my guy, Yusef Corker, safety from yep. Kentucky. Um, appreciate you uh, stopping by, bro. Oh, no problem. I just want to say sometimes uh, whenever I get time off because I'm married and I have a two-year-old daughter, I listen to y'all podcast. Sometimes I listen to Darius Butler, you know, especially some of his Instagram clips he be going over on uh, – uh, NFL clips you go over on Instagram, I'm peeping the dad. But sometimes y'all be on a Pat McAfee show, I'll be watching that too. So yeah. it's really kind of cool being on this <laughs> podcast, man. So it's kind of like a dream come true. Man, you know it's you know it's love, man. You know you part of the family now anyway. You with yep. Lisa and Jeff, man. So um, definitely had to get get you on here, man. And just first off, man, just just speak on that. You know, um, you know, coming out of college, like mm -hmm. you said, you married, um, you have a little one. Um, Typically, coming into the league, guys aren't, you know, they're not in that process or in that phase of their life, man. Just talk about that. Well, really, shoot, in college, it was, it was a little bit rough, but, you know, my wife really helped out a lot, especially when she, we came up with a nice little smooth schedule. You know what I mean? I drop off at school. Then when I go to football, folks on football. Then when I come back home, I got to switch back to daddy mode. So she just normally give me four things to do. You know, when you get home, you got to entertain her, yeah. clean the kitchen, put in the bath, and got to put her to sleep. And after that, shoot, I'll be too tired, so got to do everything all over again. But, no, nah, it, it it was it was a pretty smooth process after we got it down nah, pat. Man, that's what's up, man. And it seems like you already have that routine and that schedule down, man. So it's mm -hmm. gonna be a smooth transition for you, man. Um, just talk about your past season, man. Um, how did you feel that you 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 did as a as a as a player, um, as a team? Um, and yeah, basically, just how, how how did you do this year? I feel like I did real good, especially controlling the back end. I feel like I communicated a lot a lot better than in the past. They put a lot more on my plate, just really, like I said, just making all the checks, make sure everybody's on the same page. Because, you know, as a defense, you know, everybody be doing everything right. But if one person not, it leads to the touchdowns and leads to big plays. And I make sure I did a good job of just containing those big plays and things like that. Uh, I feel like I did better in coverage coming out uh, this year. Got mm -hmm. about eight pass deflections, especially in my first couple of games and things like that. So I think I had a pretty successful year. That's good, man. And did you talk about being here in Mobile, Alabama, man, at the Senior Bowl? I'm always talk about the opportunity, mm -hmm. right? So when you have an opportunity, man, you got to take the most of it. So while you down here, and obviously yesterday was the first day where you guys were on field, one on one, seven on seven, things of that mm -hmm. nature. Um, what is your, what are you looking to get out of this opportunity where you can perform in front of the scouts and these GMs and front office, uh, front office teams? Well, really, man, just being here is really a blessing. You know, just I just love being here. I just love to compete. You know what I mean? The one on one's good. One on one's the toughest stuff. We did nine oh seven, you know, real physical, you mm -hmm. know. Uh that's all I can really say about it. So, yeah. So from day one to day two, man, what you feel as though you should, you know, you can improve on? Uh, just being more confident in my checks and where to go and things like that. Uh, day one was a little bit rushed, especially since, you know, we ain't really put on past uh, January 1st. So yeah. after that, I feel like day two should go a lot smoother, a lot more comfortable, you know, fly around a little bit more faster. So No, no doubt. So uh, this process, man, I know this process is always crazy, man. You know, when you get done playing on a collegiate level, you, um, you know, you're trying to find representation. Um, you're working out. Um, how's, this, how's this process been for you so far? I feel like it's really been easy or kind of smooth just because uh, my family's had my back, you know. Wife uh, gives, gives input on things she hears and things she's like, you need to watch out for that or, you know what I mean? So especially when picking an agent or picking a financial guy, you know. It's kind of like being a, uh, being a high school, you're being kind of recruited all Pretty over dope. again. Yeah. And everybody's spending you the same stuff. So you just got to really kind of go with kind of gut feeling that, and go with what, what feels right. Nah, no doubt, man. So look. I know I ain't going to keep you too much longer, man. Again, man, I appreciate you stopping by. Wish you the best of luck. And like I said, man, you part of the family now, man. So yep. go out there do your thing, baby. All right. All right. I appreciate it, man. Of course, baby.